Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And oh boy, just as they were starting to gain positivity and get away from some of that negative image that we've seen over the last few years from AT&T, it looks like they're going to make another bad move in the short term. So I was told about this several weeks ago but was told that I shouldn't discuss it or be, uh, you know, speak openly about it until a publication leaks it. So we now have the Wall Street Journal put out an article titled AT&T Boss Sees Room to Raise Prices, Cut Cost After Media Exit. Now, what they're quoting and referencing in this article is the inflation. And that is what internally AT&T is referencing as well to, for the justification of a price increase. Now, this is what I'm being told. Now, I don't have any information on the fiber, just wireless. But fiber is also being discussed in this article for a potential price increase. Now, this is what I have heard internally. I'm hearing prices are going to increase starting in June or as early as June. Now, this is all subject to change. None of this is set in stone. They're, they're referencing the inflation increase. Contractors are asking for more money because the gas prices are going up. Parts are more expensive. The fiber itself that they're buying is increasing. Radio equipment, C-band equipment, that price has increased. Also, phone prices are increasing as well. Later this year, the new iPhone that's coming out AT&T is going to have to pay more to bring that device in. And you, as you guys know, they are still running new and existing customers get free phones. That is expensive. It's cost them already a good grip of money last year from the, pri from the prices that they paid for that iPhone. Now, it's potentially going to cr increase once again. So AT&T is, you know, it's cutting into some of their profits. But we all know AT&T makes... A good amount of gross profit, right? Their free cash flow is right around twenty billion. But instead of letting the the free cash flow go down, they're going to pass that cost off onto the consumer. Of course they are. So I will, of course, leave this article in the description down below so you guys could check that out. But that's what I'm hearing internally. So the next piece to kind of give you an idea of, of what's to come. And again, this is all subject to change and is pure speculation on my part because I don't have anything official. I've told several people about it to kind of get a, get a feel and reaction. They didn't really like it too much because now they're kind of concerned of, okay, what if, what is the future? You know, what if my fiber goes up and wireless? Now that's, that's going to add up. So this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing starting in June, all prices are going up across the board. New existing plans will increase. FirstNet, business, new unlimited and old unlimited plans are going to increase is what I'm hearing. They are going to increase single line customers by $6 per the account and multi-line customers by $12 per the account. It's not per line, it's per the entire account. So it just goes up by $12 and $6 respectively. Now, I'm also hearing the AT&T Next program. If you are enrolled in that, that's the program that allows you to upgrade every year. Is also going to increase by $1, one full dollar. So you're potentially looking at an increase of $7 if you are in that program for the single line and 13 for the multi-line if you are enrolled in that program. So that's, that's what's floating around right now. This is not official. Again, this is all subject to change. But it could happen as early as June. And the fact that Wall Street Journal put out this article, there is where there's smoke, there's fire. So I'll reach out again to get more info over the next few days to kind of see where they're at internally. But that right now is where it stands. 
Now, I've also been told that if consumers, business, and FirstNet do not accept the price increase, they, they are free to leave and they can send in their devices. Again, that's also not set in stone and that's also subject to change. But for right now, that seems to be the way that AT&T is going to get themselves out of any legal issues if there are some in case some people have say, hey, look, this is not what we agreed upon. Whatever, whatever. That's kind of how at and is looking at this to, to kind of get, okay, you don't want this. Okay, I'm just going to allow you to leave. Just send back your phone, right? And then I'll forgive, I'll forgive the rest. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm hearing. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. Of course, we won't know until it's all officially public. But that's what I wanted to let you guys know. Again, I have no info on the fiber side. But if you are a wireless and fiber customer, and let's say fiber goes up another five, ten dollars now that's going to increase to 20 plus. Now, you, you, you know, that's a kind of significant increase. Now, the question is, Verizon, Nate, and, and T-Mobile, are they also going to follow this increase? Verizon, eh, they're, they're already the most expensive. Do they potentially increase prices? Is there a chance? Maybe after AT&T does it, a, uh, Verizon says, okay, we're going to follow suit, right? The carrier that I don't think will increase prices is T-Mobile. They can just simply start charging for their free lines or stop offering them altogether, and that in itself will be an increase in money for them. But right now, the way their business is set, their strategy is set, they I don't think they want to increase prices. And I don't think it's in their best interest because they are the leader in growth and by perception, they're considered to be cheaper. If they come in more expensive now or closer to at and Verizon, people are going to be like, I'm not going to leave to go to T-Mobile if they're just $2 cheaper. Just for an example, right? So very, very interesting times. This could be a big shift in the wireless industry by at and officially releasing this price increase. Because it may make the other carriers, you know, want in on that as well. They will, you know, Verizon may also want a piece of that pie. And T-Mobile may be like, look, we're not going to increase prices. We'll just, we'll just intercept all the customers that, that are going to leave you for that price increase. T-Mobile is in the better position to not increase prices. Their CapEx is not as high as Verizon and AT&T's. They don't spend an insane amounts of money deploying their own fiber. So they're in a much better position than Verizon and AT&T. Their N41 deployments are at larger scale. I'm sure the warehouse is more full. They've probably locked in pricing that's still cheaper. So again, that's something that T-Mobile may be looking at to to keep growing, you know, and then the churn and, and the ratio, the port ratios are likely going to favor T-Mobile here in, in, in the short term if AT&T does decide to officially raise the pricing across the board. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. I look forward to reading all of your comments. It's going to be an interesting one. This is going to get a lot of people ticked off. Some may say, okay, that's not bad, six bucks. I, I spend that on more, more than that on lunch. But then I know there's that crowd that's going to be like, well, if they're doing this now, what are they going to do in the future? What else is coming? You know, what if they do increase prices on fiber as well? That's going to, you know, that's going to add up over time. So make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.